Ding. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I am Chase Carrington. This is the CLC Paint YouTube channel where I am showing you tips and techniques trying to take your landscape painting abilities further, faster. <laughs> but today I just wanted to come on and do a simple... I did the first half of this painting yesterday on Instagram Stories Live. Wanted to test that out. That was interesting. Ended up uploading that to IGTV. And then my phone died on the next video I was doing. That's always fun. So we're here on the computer with the webcam powered by StreamYard. StreamYard's pretty cool. If you've never used StreamYard, it gives you the ability to use banners. So if you're interested in in-depth exclusive training, check out my Patreon and start learning and painting with me today. Patreon.com slash CLC paint. As well as if you're interested in my paintings, you can shop them on Etsy. Etsy.com slash shop slash CLC paint. And thank you for watching. All right. We're not done, though. We're going to start painting. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen. I think all we want to do for this is just real simple trees reflections. Trees reflections. So let's get ourselves, how about we use some phthalo green today. Ooh, mix that up in there. Maybe we can actually get the lid off. That's an interesting thing sometimes is you get your lid real stuck on there and it makes it difficult to get off and you got to be careful so you don't spray oil everywhere sometimes the oil gets separated sorry about that the best way to learn is to try and the best way to do is to do <laughs> all right now phthalo greens I'll give you an idea of what phthalo green looks like, just pure phthalo green. So maybe we'll just tap it in right there. Now, now I'll kind of tap underneath of that. We can blend this out here in a sec. I just wanted to show you kind of the color that phthalo green gives you. And it's actually bluer than that. Maybe I can show you on the bristles. Eh, not quite. Oh, well. But, anyways, we're just going to tap in a little, little area of green like that. And I think I want to lighten it up. So I'm going to take just a touch of white and tap some white onto that. So maybe the white will lighten it up for us. And then... Then we're going to pull straight up with it. Just real tiny pulls, though. Just barely to give the indication of trees that are way, way back in the distance. And the ones that get further to the edge, they can be a little taller over there. And same thing, but down. Pull down. And do, 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 do. I need my painting knife. Uh oh, that happens to be across the room. Let's go grab it. Handy dandy painting knife. All right. Now we're going to take some liquid white. Luckily, it's still wet from yesterday. And we're just going to slice in a line where we think water should be. And don't worry about being perfect with it, just let it be real wild. 
as long as it's straight. As long as it's straight. The interesting thing about doing this is the confidence. You have to be confident. But see, if you put that little white line, it looks like already the separation of land and water, at least to me. At least to me. Now, set our painting knife over there, palette knife. So we're going to have another land area behind that, and it's going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to grab some black and mix it with the thalo green. And that should show up a bit darker. And we're just tapping down, making kind of a hill, that kind of shape. And then underneath of that, you let it get softer and it almost fades out to a mistiness underneath of that. I'm going to press to get some different shapes for trees on the top. And then once again, just pulling up. And it's just a little press and pull. Ding. And that gives us trees that are way off in the distance. And so this kind of shows you the difference between the thalo green pure and then this is thalo green mixed with black. So I'm going to blend those colors over here as well. There we go. And maybe even in our reflections. It's that simple. You literally just add the color in. So depending how wet the canvas is, yesterday we applied liquid white on the whole canvas before we started. So that way the paint that we put on the canvas blends and slides and moves. See, the drier the canvas is, the more it will create this grainy texture compared to this nice mixing up here. It's interesting to keep in mind. All right. We're just going to pull some reflections down there. It literally just looks like a smear of color. Do not worry about perfectionism. Grab a little bit of liquid white, and once again, we just cut our water line in there. Ding. I've been trying to get to 25 listings on my Etsy shop. If I can list this one or another one, that might be, um, it might be a way for me to get there quicker. I don't know. It's interesting. I heard if you, if you list something more often, it promotes it in the algorithm. It's so crazy working with algorithms, trying to do all this stuff. But anyways, every painting done is another possible listing. I find when you walk into a room and you got one of these on your wall compared to not, it's the mood, the energy, the feelings that you get are just... Just fantastic. All right, let's pull that down. Maybe get a little liquid white in the reflection. Don't be afraid to do that because you can always come back with your knife and cut it off again. Kind of separate that. The key is just always play around with it. Now, we're going to come in and do some bigger trees here. So I'm going to grab more phthalo green, a little bit more black, mixing them quite a bit now. Mm. All right. 
And maybe there's some bigger trees right here. So I'm just going to use the corner of the brush pulling down. And when you do this part, you have to reload often because the brush gets all frayed out. Wiggle it, pull it, wiggle it, pull it, and that kind of sharpens up the ends. And you can do about, you know, a few little tall trees at the end. But we'll do the same over here. And don't worry about covering up your mountain. It's all good because it makes the background more interesting. So same thing here. Press, pull straight down. Make some taller trees just like that. Make sure they're straight up. I'll just kind of add an angle there. And then maybe we'll just do some reflections. Real nice and easy. There we go. Over here. Maybe we'll have another layer over here. Let's do that, huh? So grab some more color. Quite a bit. And... First, we'll pull one line straight down, like that, right? And then the corner of the brush, same, pretty much the same exact way. Just more emphasis on the corner you're going to use. And now just tap with the corner. Make a little tap at the top. And let it go back and forth. Anybody can do this. This is literally the easiest way. The thicker you get the paint, the more texture you'll have in there. The most important part is don't worry about perfection. Just let the brush do it. And just tap a tree down like that. Now that we know the land's going back there, we can finish off that water line. So we'll go back to our knife, bring the water line all the way back into the distance there, like so. And we'll add some more color down there. Who knows what's going on back in the distance? Yeah. Now, Instead of tapping with the corner, we're going to press up like this. Let's do a side angle on that. Just press in, bending the bristles. And then underneath of that, you can literally just fill it in with color. So you're making a triangular shape here. So it's like a triangle that goes from the bottom of the tree down this direction and then back down that direction like it's coming towards us. And all we need to make that look good is some thick paint pressed like that to create the texture that we want. See how it makes little grassy things? We want those grassy things. Boom. All right, nice and easy. Now, reflection for this guy once again. It's literally just as easy as creating it. And then this, you can pull straight down, just like that. Ding. Now, we'll finish that. Now yeah, let's do this side. Let's do this side. How about this side? Got some little bushes down there. And then maybe a couple of big guys. I right. just want this to be real simple, real easy for anybody who wants to try. Let me take that down. Sorry about that. You just tap with the corner, just the corner of the brush. And then you can flip it over when one corner runs out of paint. And then press harder as it goes down. The Q 
key to this, don't worry. And same thing upside down in our reflections. Just fast with the reflections. Don't even worry about them. Just, you just want a similar shape is all you want. And so if you want nicer reflections, we can always add some. And I think that will help us at the moment if we do that. So I grab some phthalo blue on this brush. Let's pop the – sometimes the canvas is too small to fit in my easel here. So I gotta pop it up on the rail down there and hold it from the top. I'm gonna take the blue, touch right at the bottom of the land, and pull it down. So that way the blue will mix with mix with the color of our land. We'll do that back here too. Color of our reflections. And then we'll pull that straight across just slightly. Just slightly. Same thing down there. Nice. Now I'll get some more blue just because I want to touch up the water down here. All right. Get a little softer feel there. There we go. There we go. Just let it mix all around. I'm leaving these little white areas kind of because the clouds are playing up in the sky. Have some reflections going on. All right. Now, I'll go get a different brush for highlights. We can wash our brushes once we're done here. Real quick, let's do just a trunk. Just a tree trunk. Grab some brown. Some burnt umber. Maybe we'll use that palette. Maybe we'll use this palette here. Grab some of this brown. Spread it around. And some white. Mixing those together gives us a nice medium brown tone, making sure it's still marbled, mixed up. Just going to barely tap where there might be a trunk, tree trunk that exists. This will be covered up somewhat by our uh, highlights, so don't worry too much. Ding, nice, nice. Beautiful how the birds are chirping out there. Plants are growing, nice and sunny. All right, wipe the knife off there. I should have a paper towel here so that I could wipe the knife off. Yeah, it's no worries. Clean all this up when we're done. We're almost done here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. See, our variation of colors here is interesting. I don't like how the water line goes uphill there. Maybe we can maybe we can fix that and bring it down a hill. Do, do, do. Like something like that. Or oh, maybe it'll come forward. Alright, let's let's do that. Let's push that water line into the background. A little hair hanging you know. up. Careful with that. <laughs> Push that water line in the background like this. Just bring your bush out into the water. Bring your land and your bushes out in front of it in the water. And then once again, the triangular angle. Bring it back towards us. Then reflections for this out here. Right? Got to have that. 
And we'll use our brush to clean that up. Press real hard, let it swipe down. Mixing the colors on the canvas already. Swipe that across. Nice. Get ourselves a waterline. Oh, maybe before we do a waterline, we'll do some dirt on this guy. How about we do some dirt? Grab some brown. Perfect. We'll do the same thing over here, except I gotta move my palette in the canvas. Yeah, there we go. Nice and thick texture. Whoever owns this painting in the future will be able to touch the texture so thick once it dries. And there we go. Just a little, little land. Now, add the white to that. Some highlights, maybe even some, some of our land color. All right. Interesting. Makes it very interesting. It's definitely a messy one here. Sometimes it's fun to make it messy. A little more white. Nice. Nice. Liking that. All right, now, water lines. Ding. There we go. Just trying to keep this super simple for anybody who's never tried this before it's just knowing that you can do something like this and creating your own masterpiece it, what it does for you inside is unexplainable it makes you feel so good I'm just rubbing in some rubbing in some little ripples in the water here like so Start out here at the edge, work our way in. Beautiful. Ding. Hmm, not bad. What do you think? All right. All right. Good to practice. It's good to practice. All right, I think before we finish up here, we'll just do a little highlights real quick with some yellows. Oh, they all dried up, really? Wow, all righty. That's exciting. Let's get ourselves. Move my brushes around and my palettes. There we go. Get ourselves some yellow, some cad yellow. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. It's awesome how you can put those. <laughs> stream yard, check it out if you want to try streaming. There's probably many others, but also, if you're low on energy and you need something to help give you clarity of mind, heightened mood, more energy throughout the day, 
something I take every day is C60, Carbon 60 Buckminster Fullerene from C60PurplePower.com. Amplify energy, vigor, and performance. I take this stuff every day. Like I said, the suggested use is a teaspoon daily. And it's 99% pure carbon 60, carbon fullerenes inside of an MCT organic coconut oil. And I'm telling you, this stuff will give you the energy, the clarity of mind. It'll change your life. Use the code CLC10 to get 10% off at c60purplepower.com and start taking control of your health and your energy today. <laughs> Shameless plug. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all who check out C60 Purple Power. It's truly an amazing product. And if you use that code, I'll get a little commission. It helps support the work that I do here and allows me to continue sharing paintings like this. Now, let's go in here and just do some highlights. Just do some highlights. I'm going to grab whatever liquid white I got left on my palette over here and try to get it into the bristles. Mm, perfect. There we go. Nice, nice moist, nice wet paint there. Not too thick. Yeah, I think we'll do this first. I like to tap the highlights right on the outside edges of the branches. It kind of makes it look like one part of the branch is a shadow and another part is kind of highlighted with light shining on it. And as you do this, the yellow on the brush will mix with the paint on the canvas and start to get green. And so you'll end up with a beautiful, I think, perfect green color for your, for your pines. Nice. And see that kind of covers up the stem. Only little bits of the or the trunk are still showing after after that. We'll come over to this side here. This guy needs a little touch up. He's looking a little rough. He's looking a little rough. Damn. Gotta remember, remember your light is usually on one side, so the light should be coming from the left here. Sometimes you just get having fun and don't really worry too much. So you can press down with the corner doing this, or you can press up. It's however you want the shapes to appear, and I would suggest playing around with it. You get different things different times. And maybe we'll do the back side with some greens, darker green. Yeah. There we go. Darker at the bottom. Don't let the bottom get too bright. Now just do one little shiner. Oh, right there. Oh, yeah. Some shiners. There we go. Hmm. Make sure you always leave dark areas in there. That helps. And we'll tap a little bit of this color in the background. Never know. Sometimes people look real close, and that changes the whole painting. It's that extra detail. Now, normally, you do your highlights down in the water, but I didn't want to do too much this painting other than a couple taps. So, just to keep it simple, I wanted to do it like this. So you can literally just tap softly in there. And same over here. Make sure you have some color on your brush. And literally just softly tap the color into the water. Now, instead of the corner, we'll flip the brush upside down and press into the grassy areas. Don't worry. It's exciting. 
Boom. Perfect. Same thing below. Might get some dirt in your brush if you do. Reload with the yellow. Boom. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. And tap it to fade it, to blend it. Tap it to blend it, to fade it. Do, 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 do. Same thing over here. Reload. Just do some taps and some presses. Hmm. Telling you the spiritual peace you can find by doing this is incredible. Now reload once more. Bring our reflections down in the water here. Just makes you feel good. Just makes you feel good, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I think we'll just reflect that and call it good. Where's the perfect? There it is. A water brush. Pull straight down. Unless you don't want to. If you like where it is, totally leave it. I'm just doing this because I have this confidence. And I'm not afraid to swipe over what I've done already because I can always come back and waterline again. Pull straight down. And across, give it a watery feel. Nice. That was almost nicer with the brightnesses to it. Maybe we'll do that. Give it those yellows. Yeah, there we go. Do the same over here. Give it that texture in the water. Screw it. Who cares, huh? Who cares? We'll just waterline right over the texture. I like the texture better. See, so yeah, I decided I didn't like it and changed it. That's the secret here. Decide you don't like it, change it. Make it make it the way that you want it. This is your world here. This is your world. Now we'll just come back with a waterline. 32 minutes. I could do this all day. It's amazing how fast the time goes when you're painting. Touch that up a little bit. Nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that helps somebody in their adventures. I really appreciate everybody that takes the time to watch. Um, check out my products on my Teespring, on Etsy. Come join me on Patreon if you want longer, in-depth, exclusive trainings that go more into the small complicated details and until then I want to say thank you for watching smash the subscribe button and gently tap the like <laughs> but I truly appreciate it. I hope to bring value I'm grateful to have the opportunity to do this and share what I've learned um, at the same time sharing the joy and maybe some entertainment along with the information. Look at how, look at how thick that is. I can put the knife underneath of the texture of that. That's awesome. So you can get a side view. The knife fits underneath of the texture there. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in the future with more painting live streams to bring your way. True 